Croix to a channel blight fluid. Yes, we're back with Supernova. And thanks to all of you who took part in the poll deciding where we're going to go with this and who we're going to train with. And I can tell you that the winner of the poll will be revealed later. I'll leave you in suspense for a bit longer. And don't bother going to check the poll. I deleted it. Anyway, let's stop all the waffle and get back to the story. There's a bland breakfast waiting for me when I wake up, which I promptly consume. All of my thoughts race to make sense of everything that's been happening. Before they spiral out of control, though, I'm interrupted by Gil. Nick, Unbound has indicated that she would like to speak with you. She'll be here in a moment. Uh, unbound? All right. I just started considering talking when the Sentinels, but Unbound wouldn't have been my first choice. She never offered to in the first place. But even beyond that, I think I already know what she'll have to say in response to my doubts. As Gil stated, the bear gets here within five minutes. I'm dressed and sitting on the bed, waiting, when she steps into the room, this time without the use of her powers. Good afternoon, Nick. Hi, I mean, hello, Unbound. You want you to speak with me? With a nod, she surveys the room, then seems to decide to stay standing. I believe we should discuss your current situation. I clench and unclench my right fist, eyes fixed on the figure etched into the metal of the wristband. After a long moment, I look up at the bear. Sure, then. You think I'm actually cut out for this? You have the bracelet. That should be indication enough that you are. How does this even work? Did the bracelet approve of me, or did Templar? Judging from what you told us, which am I inclined to believe, it was a combination of both. I rubbed the fur on my arm, thinking. You said yesterday I don't really have a choice. That was perhaps an inaccurate assessment. It's not that you don't have a choice. Rather, there's an obvious correct choice and an obvious wrong one. I believe you know which is which. My stomach twists into a knot. I'm just... It's scary. Unbound continues to regard me, her expression not shifting. If she feels any sympathy, her voice doesn't show it. A perfectly natural and understandable response. Nevertheless, I believe that you can, and should, work through that fear. I hug my arms and avert my gaze again. It's becoming clear to me now that part of me was excited for what I could be doing with this. That feeling is all but evaporated now. Unbound exhales, looking a little frustrated, which does nothing to calm my nerves. Nick, you have been given an opportunity, an opportunity most folk don't get, to do something great with your life, be part of something bigger. You haven't just acquired powers beyond most people. Templar was, is, a symbol that's inspired millions. He brought this team together. He protected this city, this country, and this earth against the myriad threats. We need that symbol now. As far as I'm concerned, to reject this call would be inconceivable. Shit. That is overwhelming. Everything Unbound just said makes me feel so small and weak. I can't be a goddamn symbol. I'm just a college kid. She told me herself yesterday she doesn't believe I can live up to Templar. So why? My heart is racing. I know she's right, I do. I think this is what the Badger was asking of me, to take on this burden. Maybe that's why he said he was sorry. Because he knew how overwhelming it was going to be. And Mound walks over the only chair in the room, moving the stuff Gil left for me and sits. Nick, I... I don't want to give you the wrong idea. The first time her cadence changes... She speaks in a kinder tone now, and even her expression softens. I will not sugarcoat an attempt to reassure you. That would be unfair to you and to Templar. This is going to be difficult, but with our guidance and support, you will be able to pull through. Do the best you can do. And if I say no? You'll go back to your old life. With no regrets, I hope. 
I'm silent for a while longer. Then a nervous chuckle escapes me. <laughs> Sorry, I promise I'm not usually this indecisive. Quite frankly, Nick, if you had jumped at the opportunity, I would be questioning your judgement. That you are weighing your options is a sign you are taking your situation seriously. Right. Then, would you mind if I take a little more time to think? Of course. Let Gil know when you're ready to talk again. I'll do that. Thank you, Unbound. She hesitates in the doorway, then her cape swishes as she rounds the corner and I'm left alone. It doesn't take long for me to decide that pacing around is doing less than nothing for me, though, even if I said I needed to think. There are two people who offered to talk about this. Maybe I should take one of them up on that offer. And there's one who didn't, but could still be worth it to hear him out. Nieces was the most supportive of me yesterday. Surprisingly friendly, too. Surprising because as far as superheroes go, Nieces has always been a bit of an enigma. Hell, I don't even know what his actual superpowers are. Just that whenever he shows up, he kicks ass. But in general, he seems to stay out of the spotlight. No interviews, no appearances on talk shows, nothing of the sort. Regardless, his words yesterday were comforting. I'll go and talk to him more. A girl, can I speak with Nisis? Gil replies after a brief delay, which I suppose must mean he's checking in with the fox. Certainly, Nick. Nisis is in the meeting room. I head out at once. I'm slow to enter the meeting room when I get there, afraid I'll interrupt something important. Nobody's talking, though, as far as I can tell, so it should be all right. I notice Nisi is sitting in the same chair as yesterday, a piece of paper in front of him. He's scribbling something, an intense look of concentration on his face. Neither mask nor cowl conceal his face. Turns out Nisi is quite a handsome Corsac fox, not much older than me either, judging by his appearance. He doesn't look up, his nose close to the paper, his whiskers twitching. I don't think he's seen me yet. Suddenly he growls, grabs the paper and tears it in half. It's then he notices me and his snarl shifts into a more neutral, if blank, expression. Sorry about that. He leans down to snatch one of the torn halves off the floor, then crumbles it into a ball. Is this a bad time? Oh, not at all. I by all means sit. I try not to frown. Nisi's voice is very flat, which is a slight undertone of anger. I hope it's not directed at me. I sit as instructed anyway, looking around. The other sentinels must be either be away or somewhere else in the base. Several news updates are playing on the vast wall monitor, but the sound is muted. Nisis closes his eyes. I give him a curious glance. Just then they're open again, his voice is far warmer when he speaks. How are you holding up, Nick? Now he sounds like he did yesterday. Fine, I think. I guess I still haven't quite wrapped my head around this. I get it. Where are the others? They're out and about. Unbound is investigating the wolf that attacked Templar. I see. She didn't mention that. The fox tilts his head to the side. You spoke with her? Yeah. Well, either way, we don't have many leads at the moment. Baron hasn't deigned to contact us since our last talk. Superfang popped in earlier, but I think he left again. He likes doing the whole hero of the streets thing. I nodded his words. I hope Unbound finds that bastard soon. He needs to pay. Nick, listen. There's a lot going on right now. We're all on edge, but doesn't mean you should feel pressured into doing, well, anything. No matter what others say. In some ways, yes. But what Unbound said is true. One way or another, I've been given this responsibility, right? Or did you ask for it? For any of this? No. I can't quite read the expression on the fox's face. He leans back into his chair with a sigh. I don't know why Templar would do this. 
there's a sudden tightness in my chest. Oh, if anybody could answer that question, it'd be his teammates. Maybe it's best not to dwell on this. All I can hope is he had a good reason. Whatever it was, I'd hate to prove him wrong. I raised my arm to show the bracelet. Nisi's eyes it with obvious discomfort. That's an unfair way of looking at this. You shouldn't let someone else lingering shadow determine your destiny. Lingering shadow, huh? Well, he has a point there. Templar casts a long shadow at that. Even so, I don't think that's a bad thing. Although you're right, there must be a reason you have that bracelet. You can use it. But again, that doesn't mean you have to do that. There could be others. I think if you just decide you don't want to do this, the bracelet would find its way to someone else. I won't blame you for that decision. Nobody will. I swallow, anxiety building once again, even though the words are comforting. Unbound will. You're your own person, Nick. I'm taken aback at how sharp those words come out. But he's right. Back there, I was watching that fight. That's pretty much helpless, you know. That bastard was smashing his fists over and over into Templar. I could tell it wasn't going to end well. I was terrified, to be honest. I saw that piece of rebar, and it's all I had at the moment, right? I had to grab it. Templar was a hero. I've seen him rescue so many people. So I swung, even though I knew I might die. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I have to do this. Templar asked me to use his power. I think I should. There's a long silence. Nisi's give me a searching look, but I meet his gaze, feeling confident in what I just said. Sure, there might be others who could do this, but Templar asked me. I don't know why, but that's what happened. And I will do what he asked. The fox buries his face in his paws. I don't know if I agree with your reasoning, but... If that's what you want... He lowers his arms and stares at the table, brows furrowed. I guess you know best, Nick. Templar? Thanks, nieces. Frank, may as well call me by my name. We sit again, the fox drumming on the table with his fingers. Now, I'll be happy to help you with whatever you need. That being said, I don't think I would make a good mentor. As difficult as he is, Baron was closest to your predecessor. He can give you the kind of guidance I can't. I'll keep that in mind. I don't think I'm all that comfortable with the idea of asking the Baron in black for assistance. I haven't forgotten that comment about chopping off my arm. I voiced none of that, however, letting the silence go on a little longer, with Nisus lost in his own thoughts. And curiosity overtakes me. Frank, can I ask you something? Of course. Are you a match accuser? There's a pause before he responds. Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. Guess I just don't know what your powers are. The fox chuckles. I'm not. Magic users tend to be quite insular. They don't typically join teams from what I've seen. Oh, you know some then? A couple. But anyway, now's not the time for that. I should let the others know you've made up your mind. Unbound might want to call another meeting. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Gil will guide you back to the medroom. See you soon. I leave the room as Nisi starts giving Gil instructions. I get a breather while the team assembles around the meeting about me. To my relief, I don't have to wait too long. Everyone's already in their seats. Vince gives me two thumbs up when I enter, while Nisi merely nods at me. The Baron and Unbound, as always, are harder to read. As you all know, Nick has decided to keep the bracelet. As such, he'll assume the persona of Templar. Why, should we call him Squire or Stable Boy, something more appropriate to his station and experience? I can't have the Baron is just mocking me or if he's serious. 
Well, we want to object one inbound set as well, if I'm not about to suggest other demeaning aliases myself. After all, I am not Templar, racist or not. This is a matter of practicality. It would be prudent for the Sentinels to keep the truth of Templar's demise a secret. Really? Nisi sits back in his chair, scratching his chin. Yeah, that makes sense. We wouldn't want to advertise that we've been weakened. Precisely. Moreover, we have very few leads on the killer. The news that he failed in his attack on Templar may drive him out of hiding. Oh. I guess I'm going to be bait. At least I'll have a shiny new set of armour to protect me. I stifle my nervous laugh. Shouldn't the people of Nova be allowed to mourn their fallen hero? There's an uncomfortable silence. As much as I'd like for that to be the case, I do think that's not our best option right now. The Baron huffs, but doesn't argue any further. So, I'm just supposed to pretend I'm Templar? The actual Templar? For the moment, Nick, you're supposed to stay out of sight. Which brings us to our next topic. Nick, a Templar, requires training. That's an understatement. Can't even summon the armour right now. I have been in some scraps, but I'm not a fighter. I have no idea how to handle a weapon of any kind. In short, I'm a mess. It would be for the best if one of us took over said training. Or, more precisely, one of you three. There are matters that demand far too much of my attention. I look at the others. Vince raises his hands if he's sitting in class. It's kind of adorable. I can do it. Would it be better if we spread the duty around between all of us? I will put undue strain on Nick. It's easier to assign him one mentor. The Baron turns his mask to Vince. Oh, due respect and all that, champ. I think someone a little more experienced should handle the training. And he says, and you have buddied up for the rookie. Why not take him under your wing? No, I don't think that's a good idea. This is said so early too, but never explained why. Is he too busy, perhaps? Yeah, I might be the youngest, but that's a good thing, right? I went through the same things as Nick not that long ago myself. I can help him. I believe the Baron is right, Supervan. The mentor role is not to be taken lightly. Which is why I think you should do it, Baron. Wait, what? Is that something I would want? You're the most experienced. Perhaps more importantly, you know Templar best. Nick needs that. A thrill in his wiping the snot for the rookie's nose would be... I'm sure I have much better things to do with my time. I don't want the youngsters to handle it. Nieces, stop being stubborn. The fox crosses his arms and averts his gaze. Well, if I have to, I could. You don't have to. I'm telling you guys, I can train Nick. I mean, it's for four years now. I'm not new. I can tell this argument might be coming, be becoming circular. Perhaps I should wait in for my own opinion. Although I'm not even sure myself. What they're saying all makes sense. I like Vince. He seems like a great guy and he's eager to help me out. But he's just two years older and even got his powers earlier than I did. A more experienced mentor might be better for me. Nisa has made it clear he doesn't want to mentor me. be honest, that hurts a little. I thought he liked me. He did say he's going to do it if he needs to, and he is more experienced than superfying while not being an asshole like the Baron. Speaking of which, the Baron. The Baron scares me a little. I mean, I'm sure he won't actually hurt me. He sure seems to dislike having me around. Would it be a good idea to entrust myself into his paws? On the other hand, he is the most experienced of the three. If he was that close with Templar, it might be worth spending time around him. The Sentinels keep talking over each other as I contemplate my options. Who should I go with? And here we go. The result of the poll. Overwhelmingly, it was like 83% of the vote, which is about 533 votes. 83% of those people voted. 
super fang. Uh, if the devs happen to be watching anyone else is curious, I am actually playing Nisisi Root on my own time. I've played both of these so far, and I like both of those characters. <clears throat> so you'll be seeing Super Fang on the videos, but I know what's going on with Nisis. <clears throat> anyway, back to the story. I like the tiger. I see no reason why I wouldn't be able to guide me on this path. Yeah, he's a little young, but as he pointed out, that just means he knows what it's going to be like for me. If I can navigate college while playing superhero, might as well have someone at my side who's already done so. At least I'm pretty sure Vince went to college. I think Superfang should mentor me. Vince's muzzle splits into a giant grin. I told you guys! You won't regret it, Nick. I notice Unbound and the Baron exchange pensive glances. Nick, I think it would be for the best if the Baron Onesis did this for you. I think it will be just fine. I've seen enough of Superfang on the news to know he's a pro at what he's doing. I know I can count on him. Heck yeah, you can. Very well, so be it. Nick, rest assured that you are in good hands. Vince nods rapidly to that. The rest of us will be around to help as well, of course. From what I said earlier, I'm guessing this means Unbound, and maybe the others will be keeping an eye on how my training with Vince is progressing. Or about to complain, even if I have full faith in the tiger. But I will reiterate that for now your task is to lay low until you get the hang of your newfound strength. Sure, yeah, I understand. I glance down the bracelet. Is there anything I can do on my own, though? I don't have a good grasp of my, uh, powers? I tried to summon the armour, but nothing happened. The Baron? The Baron taps his fingers on the table. Can't help there, you'll have to figure that out on your own. That's what the bracelet can do, you've already seen most of it. The armour is extraordinarily resilient, and the mace is no joke either. You'll be able to fly, although not indefinitely like some. Should the armour be damaged, the bracelet will repair them over some time. It'll also repair your body, to an extent. I frown at that, raising a hand to my chest. Yes, you might have noticed you recovered faster than you would have under normal circumstances. Now, before you do anything stupid with that information, though, they will not save you from mortal wounds. It accelerates what your body can do on its own, nothing more. I'll keep that in mind, thanks. Just make sure nobody can see you when you summon the armour. Hell, don't even try unless one of us is around. Huh. Well, I doubt I'll follow this last bit of advice, but I'm not along anyway. With that settled, we have one more urgent matter to discuss, that being the identity of Templar's murderer. Not much to say there, unless one of you has discovered something new. Nobody I've contacted has heard of a cane and supervillain in black with shiny green fists, including Greg. Who, by the way, has been riding my ass about the new Templar's identity? Well, you haven't told him yet. Didn't we just talk about how he wouldn't? Like that ever stops you. And Mum gives both a warning look accompanied by a chagrin sigh. I suppose Gregory should be informed. It will be impossible to avoid at the funeral. If you say so. I've no idea who this Greg person might be. Another superhero, maybe. But something else catches my attention. When's the funeral? A Monday. I feel a lump falling in my throat, but I continue talking anyway. I'd like to come. Why? You didn't even know him. Nieces ignores the Baron. Well, if you want to, Nick, I see no problem with that. I'm sure you want to pay your respects. Yeah, thanks. I can tell the Baron is unhappy, for he can argue when Baron brings the conversation around to the previous topic. Regardless of the wolf's identity, what is curious to me is how Templar came across him and why he didn't call for backup sooner. Vince shuffles in his chair, his ears splayed back. As I told you, nothing on the recordings from the day suggests anything was amiss until he left the base. Indeed, my own time going over them showed as much. For all we know, Templar tried to stop some criminal activity and it escalated from there. I believe that to be likely, but I could find no incident from that afternoon worth our attention. 
So we have nothing then? It appears so. I don't have anything to offer to this discussion. Four of them have heard all I know, and I described Templar's killer as much detail as I could. Either way, I'll talk with Greg again. I just hope I can keep the conversation with him brief. You know how he is. Nisus chuckles. Oh, I appreciate your sacrifice. You better. The first time since I've met them, they sound friendly with each other. Well, I guess they are teammates, after all. Very well. Keep us updated, Baron. As for you, Nick, you should be good to return to your residence tomorrow. I perk up a little bit here in that. Only now you're finding myself in the Sentinel's hideout has been thrilling in its own way. I'm eager to return to my own bed. I trust you can keep everything that's happened secret. If you need to, we can discuss the specifics of that before you leave. I think I've got it covered, but I can run it by you if you like. Unbound nods to that. I can drive you to college sometime in the afternoon. How does that sound? Yeah, that'd be great. After I make sure it's safe. You kids take care of that. You... He points to me. Come with me. Where? You'll see. It's just a small matter before you leave. What is this about? A precaution. Nieces gives him a long, tense look. Play nice. Yeah, yeah. Hm. All right, Nick. He'll be fine. I get even more nervous at that, but I nod back to the fox regardless before following after the Baron. To my surprise, the Baron leads me straight to the med room. He says something to Gil while we're walking, speaking in a low enough voice that I can't hear the individual words. And that's on purpose, but it puts me on edge. So we enter, my eyes drawn to the small table, where I spot a rather oversized syringe. Um. The Baron picks it up and turns to me. What the hell is that? A tracking chip. What? Absolutely not. Listen, rookie, you'll thank me you inevitably get your ass in trouble and need our help. So quit whining and pull up your sleeve. Is this necessary? I value my peace of mind very highly, so yes. I'm touching you care so much about my well-being. I roll up my sleeve and grip my teeth. I keep dreaming, rookie. I'm concerned about the bracelet. Of oh, fucking course he is. The syringe plunges into my flesh, but it doesn't hurt too badly. Now stay put until Supervank picks you up. For I can retort the Baron is already out the door. I'm so glad he's not going to be mentoring me. Hopefully I'll deal with him as little as possible. I rub my arm. It's a little sore, but nothing compared to what my chest felt like a couple of days ago. What am I supposed to do for now? I wish one of the four give me a proper tour of the place, since technically I'm part of the team now. Maybe my new mentor will do so and begin training. I wonder if everyone has left by now. What will they be up to all day anyway? Patrolling the city, maybe? I'm sure Nisus mentioned that Vince likes doing the hero stuff in the streets. I can mean that the others deal with the more large-scale stuff. Like alien overlords and shit. It has happened a couple of times. Regardless, I'll learn soon enough what the day-to-day -day life of superheroes is like. I stare again at the reddish band. I've been doing that a lot. The reality of it all is sinking in. I'm a superhero now. A freaking superhero. Damn. I can't deny the excitement. There is fear there, too. My mind flashes back the image of the snarling wolf smashing his fist with ungodly force into Templar's armour. Over and over again. The badger inside the armour, bleeding, broken, dying. My breathing speeds up. The pounding of my heart is deafening. All traces of the thrill I was feeling are gone. I detected you are in distress. No, I'm f fine. 
It's fine. I force myself to breathe, slow, even breaths. Gradually, my heartbeat returns to normal. It won't happen to me. The Sentinels know they have a deadly enemy out there now. They won't let harm come to me in that way. No way. Still trembling until I manage to push the thoughts aside. I'm safe. I'll be all right. I have people to guide me. Everything is going to be fine. Before Vince comes to pick me up the next day, I have a brief chat with Unbound, going over what I should tell people when I'm out there again. Seems satisfied my ability to cover my tracks, so the talk doesn't last long. By the time we're supposed to leave, I'm desperate to be out in the sun again. Naturally, my phone informs me they're going to be overcast. I can't complain about the company, at least. I'm you see that Vince's car is only slightly less shitty than mine. I guess superheroics don't pay well. Vince apologises about the sorry state of the ride for I can get a single word out. Looks embarrassed about it too, so I assure him it's fine. We're in the large cavern I've glimpsed a couple of times during my stay here, which I now know serves as the garage. Anyway, Nisa says we're good to go. Did he? I don't know. Go and check my dorm room or something? No idea. I mean, he could sneak inside if he wanted to without much trouble. Alright, you have a roommate. No, maybe not then. Alright. We get in the car and start riding down a narrow tunnel. Vince has pushed his seat almost all the way back. I examine the tunnel as we drive. The rocky walls and ceiling in the caverns just were underground somewhere. I'm proven right as the path slopes upwards and I spot an entrance sliding open for us. We merge onto a dirt road. As I glance in the side mirror I see the entrance close again, leaving a perfectly innocent patch of ground. We're up in Saltsford Park. Vin seems to have noticed me looking around. Don't worry, this part is private property and Gil monitors the entrances. How is all this built? A girl has a lot of bodies. Like, robotic ones. Yup. I ponder that while Vince drives us onto a proper road. Guess that explains who takes care of the facility. It'd be silly to expect the Sentinels to do it, and Hiram staff will be out of the question. Nova glitters in the distance. Saltwood's one of the largest parks in the state. I've had you a couple of times. The lush forests are a perfect complement to the sandy beaches of the west. It's not too far from the city either, so the Sentinels could be back there in a short time. Well, the flying ones at least. Do you usually drive all the way up here? Oh no, Lisa's the only one who does. How'd you get around then? Vince grins. I'll show you during our first training session. We're quiet for a bit. I gaze out the window appreciating the view of the city. Hey Vince, I guess I haven't asked. What have you been up to since high school? Besides the superfang stuff, I mean. The tiger holds the steering wheel with one paw, scratching his cheek with the other. Ah, uh, not much, really. Did pre-med in over you, and I'm taking a year off to shadow some doctors to prep, prep me for med school. The surprise I'm feeling must be showing, because Vince's whiskers twitch and he gives me a nervous glance. What? Nothing, just unexpected, I guess. You're so into theatre, I figured you'd go into the arts. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, not really. My parents didn't want me to. I wasn't about to disappoint them. Huh. My own parents weren't thrilled when I decided to major in English, so I get where he's coming from. Did you do any drama stuff in college? Oh, no, I was too busy. I feel a pang of disappointment. At school he studied and became a doctor, but the tiger was so passionate about theatre. I don't think I've seen any other high school get into it as much as Vince would whenever he put on the show. Gong's always got the lead parts too. Honestly, with his looks, he could have become a famous actor. How oh, about you? Still in it? Not quite. I began writing instead, and I was awful at acting anyway. Well, don't say that, dude. You had a great voice. You're a godsend for musicals. Not inaccurate. I can indeed sing, but I'm nowhere near as good as Vince is making it sound. I beam at him anyway. You know, I'm so glad you decided to do this. Meaning? Join us, become a superhero. For a bit, I wasn't sure you would. 
I tilt my head, thinking. Well, I won't lie, Enbaum didn't make it sound easy. Talking now with nieces helped, I think. Well, I don't know. He seemed doubtful, but it's the right thing to do, yeah? He'll do great. I'll try, but thanks, Vince. We chat a little more about this and that. Turns out Vince did some volunteer work as well. Can't comprehend how he manages to pull it off since he's also a freaking super fan. When I ask, he reacts with an awkward smile. We're soon in the city and it doesn't take long from there to get to Grifton. Vince drops me off near my dorm. Oh, I've got to ask, you want me to drive you to the funeral tomorrow? No, I'm good. I should be able to get my car back by then. You sure? Ne uh, Frank lives nearby. I was going to pick him up. I'll all go together. You know what? Sure. Uh, text me, alright? Sounds good. Nisa didn't mention he lived near Grifton. I wonder if I've ever seen him in civilian guise, unaware of his true identity. I doubt it. Nova is a huge city with way too many people. Vince waves before driving off. The quality is fairly crowded. It's mid-afternoon, after all. Several students are just lounging on the grass, reading or chatting. I head into my dorm building, messaging Lucas that I'm back. He doesn't respond while I take the elevator ride to our floor. I've somehow managed to retain the keys to our suite. When I open the door, I see a blur of movement. I have barely any time to write for I'm half-hugged, half-tackled by my wolf roommate. Hey, ow! Dude, you're going to crush my ribs! Lucas laughs at that, the vibration passing from his chest into mine. I'm oh, sorry, it's glad you're, you're no good. I feel a little awkward. Lucas tends to be quite open with his feelings, but he's never been this openly affectionate. I am, indeed, good. I grin as he slaps me on the back. Be careful, asshole, I'm still sore. <laughs> it's good to be back. If only for a moment I can forget about the craziness behind and ahead of me. I sit down on my chair and turn to face Lucas. Hey, yeah, for real though, I was losing my mind before you texted me. I'm so touched. Lucas chucks a pillow at me. I catch it laughing, but don't throw it back. Okay, okay, I'm just happy we both made it out of there. Yeah, yeah. That was insane. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Well, I've explained what actually happened. Even if Unbound had instructed me to keep quiet, I know how dumb that would be. I was up at the hospital anyway. What this visit and shit? I shrug and tried to divert the topic. Us? Well, yeah, your parents too. I spoke a bunch with your mom. How did you even get her a number? Jess has it, dummy. From last summer. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten about that. I texted her back, by the way. She'll be over soon. I perk up at that. Jessica Wilder became part of our little power trio late into the freshman year. We've always been inseparable since. Looking good, all things considered. Oh, thank you. I consider myself quite a handsome raccoon. Hmm, maybe handsome for a raccoon. Hey! Lucas isn't quite as swift to catch a thrown pillow when it smacks him in the muzzle. Before he can retaliate, there's a knock at the door, so I give him a smirk while he gets up to open it. Nick! Jess unceremoniously pushes Lucas out of the way and charges right at me. The chair almost tips over, threatening to send both of us to the floor. She throws herself onto my lap and gives me another rib-crushing hug. Fuck, are you two trying to kill me? Oh, shut up. I'm just happy to see you. She squeezes once before jumping nimbly off me. The lynx pauses to look me over the critical eye. Her face then splits into a grin again. You pushed me. Well, you're in my way. I was opening the door for you. Hmm. Lucas continues to pout, rubbing his elbow in, and I burst out laughing. It's so good to see them again. How are you, Nick? I'm fine. Nothing broken as you can see. She eyes me up and down, then nods, satisfied. Looks like it. Good. You kept us pretty wide for a bit there. Jess plants herself on the couch. So then, what have you two been dummies learned from this experience? 
Don't help Lucas with projects he should have completed a month ago. Look at the sky every time you're out, just in case there are supervillains flying at you. I stay away from shitty unfinished construction projects. Don't stay with Nick somewhere just because he likes the view. Wow, Dick. Very good, very good. Seems like we internalised some valuable life lessons after all. Jess puts on a mock voice like she's lecturing a class of third graders. Indeed, ma'am. I'll be honest, at first when Lucas told me what happened, I thought he was some dumb prank. Yeah, it took a while to convince her. Uh, trust me, it was very real. And as bad she crazy as it sounds. Lucas turns to me, suddenly serious. So what happened after the stairs collapsed? You never told me. I... It's all kind of a blur as I told you. Templar and that other one were fighting. Stuff was flying around. He kept smashing into walls and shit. Gotta keep running from one place to the next to keep myself hidden. I guess at some point I just got smacked in the head and he knocked me out. I woke up at the hospital. Lucas is wearing that same pained expression I saw in the condo that day. Fuck, dude. I should have found a way up there. Don't be stupid. You are right to get out while you could. I nod in agreement. Lucas is beating himself up over complete nonsense. There's nothing he could have done. He could have just gotten himself killed. The wolf lets out a heavy sigh. Come on, you know you couldn't help me there in any way. Yeah, I guess. Jess cuts in to change the topic. You ready for midterms? Yes, I got so much study into it. All right, don't get snippy. Let you at least ask for extensions. Yeah, emailed all my professors at the hospital. Got an extra week for my papers, and they rescheduled my Tuesday exam for Friday. Well, unfair. The only extension they gave me was my independent project. Since you know my footage is lost. Well, and you know, Lisa asked me not to spread the word about what happened in the construction. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. I glance over at Jess. Noticing this, Lucas starts to shake his head. Well, I have to tell Jess to. It's not like she'd tell anyone. Duh. I'm a little uneasy about this. Nieces is nice, but I doubt you like Lucas blabbing, even to another close friend of mine. Well, speaking of... An all too familiar mischievous of smirk is tugging at Lucas's muzzle. Tell me you're unconscious when Superfan carried you off in his strong muscular arms. Jess snickers. Oh shit, Nick, that must be heartbreaking. My bemused expression seemed to entertain them all the more. Haha, <laughs> look at the broke comedians over here. Oh, come on, you know you'd love that, you've been awake. I flipped the bird of them both, even though a part of me knows they're not entirely wrong. Vince is rather handsome. Doesn't mean, however, that I wanted a bridal carry anyway. And he does have those strong muscular arms Lucas mentioned. Fuck, where the hell am I going with this? Focus, damn it. Yeah, what about you? Enjoy getting a close look at Nisus? You know what? Not half bad. Shorter than I expected, but what I, I feel like I could see under that cow was cute. What did you even see? The tip of his nose? Well, I think I spotted his whiskers peeking out too. Alright boys, you can fall over your saviour some other time. What I want to find is, do we know what happened to Templar? I blink. Templar is dead. And also, I'm Templar. I'm sure he's fine. He seemed to be winning the fight when I was knocked out. I tried to sound casual, but I'm not convinced I pulled it off. Well, I think he'd drop a couple of minutes before Superfan got there. For all we know, he might have, you know, finished the job and left. I feel my breathing grow faster as I shake my head. I think Templar just drove him off before his teammates arrived. I hope so. Besides, the supervillain would have left you alive, right? Right. I hate lying to them like this. Shit, this is harder than I thought it'd be. Fortunately, the conversation shifted to something else again. I just let Lucas and Jess chatter while I think. After half an hour or so, Jess excuses herself, then as she needs to study and reminded me to do the same. I smile and wave the links as she leaves. You still owe me dinner, by the way. The wolf lets out a rumbling laugh. 
<laughs> After all the time spent reassuring your parents. You know what? Fair. We'll call it even. The rest of the day is uneventful. I catch up on some work now they have access to my laptop. It's all strange to be back in my dorm and worrying about papers and exams, when just this morning I was in the secret base for an actual superhero team. The school stuff still seems rather distant right now. My thoughts inevitably turn to Templar's funeral. The Baron wasn't wrong. I don't think about the badger who wore this bracelet before me. Nothing about his life, who he was, what he was like. Yet he entrusted me with his powers, his armour. It's just an opportunity for me to honour him in my own small way. She asked Vince about him when we were driving instead of reminiscing about high school stuff. Suppose I can ask him tomorrow when he picks me up. Eventually I wander over to the showers. When I return, Lucas gives me a curious glance. What's that? He's pointing at the bracelet. Shit, I keep forgetting it's there. Wish I had even a tiny bit of weight to it. It's uh, a gift from a friend. The wolf frowns. Oh, when did you get it? At the hospital. I raised my answer was done before Lucas even asked the next question. Oh, I thought there's no visitors allowed. He uh, didn't visit me. He works there. Someone I knew in high school. I can tell by the way the wolf's ears are moving around that I'm doing a piss poor job with this story. A good friend? Kinda. He looks at the bracelet, then back at me. Is there a point to this? Ah, oh, sorry, I was just curious. It's just a cheap bracelet, Lucas. Anyway, night. Ah, oh, okay, good night. With a nod, I head into my room to get dressed. I'm feeling pretty irritated, although I'm not sure it's directed at him or myself. A little bit of both, maybe. By the time I'm back in the common room, Lucas has his headphones on, so I just do some light reading. If I go to bed, I inform him I'll be out tomorrow. I don't lie about my purpose, so I don't mention whose funeral it really is. Lucas leaves early for an exam while I spend the morning making myself presentable. My head for has been stubborn, so I spend a while trying to get it into proper shape. Put on my suit and tie and then just wait for Vince. About half an hour later I get the message is almost here, so I head out. Good morning, Nick. Vince is dressed the occasion as well. His oversized biceps and shoulders bulging through the navy fabric of his suit as he grips the steering wheel. Good morning. I hesitate, and sure that she's dried shock and I'll leave the seat open for Nisus. In the end I decided to just get in the front seat. Surely being Vince's mentee affords me some privileges. How how are you feeling? Oh, good. I mean, well, you know. Yeah, I think I do. I discover Nieces lives around five blocks down from Grifton. He's waiting for us in front of an old-fashioned but decent-looking apartment building. The fox looks a little awkward, shoulders hunched and paws in his pants pockets. He brightens up a little when the car comes to a stop at the curb. And hey, you two. The next ten minutes we drive in silence. I'm told the cemetery is about an hour away, just outside the southern suburbs. Nisi seems content to just like gaze out the window, and Vince is focused on the road. I fidget with the buttons of my suit. So, I've been meaning to ask something. Yeah? What was Templar like, you know, as a person? Vince gives me a sideways glance. He's a hero through and through. The folk loved him for a reason, you know. He's brave and strong. He loved helping people. Always did what he did with a wide grin. He pauses, then laughs. Because he wouldn't be able to tell with a helmet and all. But trust me, he loved doing what he did. Saving people, helping all of it. I guess that's kind of the image of Templar I had in my head. Even if it seems at all, I don't know, boring? I turn my head to look at Frank, but he doesn't meet my eyes, instead gazing out the window. His voice is tinged with melancholy. He had this sense of conviction with whatever he did. Like he always knew who he was and what he needed to do, no matter the situation. I rarely saw him hesitate, even when the circumstances were far from being black and white. 
just dependable, solid. He lets out a long sigh at the end. I sit in silence. That's a lot to live up to. And Baron said she doesn't expect me to. And why she didn't think I can. It stings at it all, but I guess it's up to me to try. I'm far from the steadfast, brave, heroic figure the superfang and Nisus are describing. That Templar is dead. I'm just a shoddy substitute. But I do intend to try. I feel Nisus is poor on my shoulder. You'll be fine, Nick. Thanks, uh, for Frank. Saying his name feels more awkward than when I do it with Superfang. Don't think he minds, though. Yeah, the risk of sounding cliche, you just don't know how awesome you are yet. He gives me a signature thumbs up, eliciting the chuckle from me. Yes, I'll have to trust you on that one. Yes, put your faith in me. Heh. <laughs> oh, another thing. Uh, yeah. Well, I still know what the Baron looks like. Under the helmet, I mean. I'll point him out to you. You don't have to talk to him today if you don't want to. No, it's fine. Think about how many times I've seen nieces and the Baron clash in the short time I've known them. Do you guys, like, not get along? Vince gives me a nervous glance. Oh, we're fine, mostly. He's just been a little insufferable since, well, you know. I don't know why, but I feel a pang of guilt in my chest, even though I know this isn't my fault. Again, don't worry about him. He'll chill out soon enough. Looking forward to it. He's a good person. I never said he wasn't. But... Uh, come on, Fang. Yes, he is a good person. A good person who's sometimes a complete ass. Vince's expression falls, but doesn't argue back. After that, Vince and I chat a little more about Templar. Lysus is still lost in his own thoughts. Only the Templar's real name was Michael O'Connor, and he was an owner of a regular pub in the city. A remarkably unremarkable occupation for someone like him to have. Not even well enough to make that judgement. Just that famous superhero Moon Knights as a bartender seems a little incongruous. But then we're in the flat suburbs south of Nova City. Not run down, but a stark contrast to lavish Magnolia Hills. Small squat houses line the narrow roads as we weave through. Something occurs to me when we turn onto the street leading up to the cemetery. The Templar's family know about the superhero stuff. Hmm? Oh yes, they all did. I don't think Shannon does, actually. That's Michael's younger daughter. That clarifies my benefit. Really? Huh. Well, Sarah and Danny know for sure. Danny was trained to be the next Templar. Oh. Um, yeah. Damn. So that's Templar's son. Do they know about me? Yes, the Baron told them. Fuck. That's going to be awkward. Should I even talk to either of them? Seems kind of disrespectful if I didn't. Then again, would they want to talk to me? I grow more nervous as we approach our destination. Several cars are parked outside the walled entrance to the cemetery. Ben stops here and we shuffle out onto the sidewalk. Don't spoil any people. Guess everyone's already in there. The air is crisper this time of year, even as the sun shines overhead. As Vince goes ahead of us, I notice Frank lingering, struggling with his tie, the knot having loosened somewhat during our ride. I want some help? Uh, sure. He looks awkwardly to the side while I fiddle with the tie. Dad is a stickler for a proper dress. I could do this with my eyes closed. Yeah, all good. So sorry about that. Thanks, Nick. I give him a quizzical look. No worries. Frank looks at his watch. Oh, we're a bit late. Well, let's go. Vince's waiting was just inside the metal gates. The cemetery is well maintained, polished stone and marble all around. As good a resting place as any. Spotting the small group that's gathered for Templar's funeral is easy with nothing but low gravestones blocking the line of sight. Take note of the family of badges at once. The middle-aged female is Bissara, which makes the tall and broad male Danny, and the young girl Shannon. On the approach, Frank nudges me and points to a tall albino rat standing next to the widow, rubbing her back with slow, circular motions. 
So that's the Baron in black. And Baron stands towards the back. This is the first time I've seen her without a mask, but since I know what to look for, recognising her is easy enough. The three of us move to join her. The bearer acknowledges our arrival with a nod. The priest, the short mouse, is reading from the scripture. I stand a bit to the side, letting the teammates mourn without me intruding. I feel out of place enough as it is. Besides the four sentinels, I don't know a single person here. I hate the thought that I was the last person who saw Templar, Mr. O'Connor, alive. Nor his family, nor his friends, nor even his superhero teammates, or a random raccoon who just happened to be chilling in an abandoned condo in the hills. I couldn't even help him in the fight that killed him. And even then, he gave me his most valued possession. Staring at the casket that's yet to be loaded into the ground, I can't help but wonder if Templar, wherever he is now, regrets his last act. I guess it's up to me to make sure he won't. And with that thought, that's where we're going to leave for now. We will be back before too long, certainly not as long as it took me to get this second episode. There'll be definitely more from Supernova in the not too distant future. And to see where all of this goes. I hope you're enjoying this one. It's a bit of a change to some of the other things I'm covering. Certainly so far a bit lighter than certainly Harches. Uh, talking about other things, uh, we'll be returning to Hammond Manor later on the weekend. Got to catch up with what's going on there. And if you've been following Password, you know we have quite a lot to unpack after that last episode. And if you don't follow Password, you'd have a huge amount to catch up on from that. But that will be on the weekend. And also, this weekend, on Saturday, I'll be joining Dirk the Red Panda, Yao, Marshmallow Bears, Fallen Wolf. We'll just be getting together at about 3 o'clock Pacific time over on Dirk's Twitch channel, I think it is, to uh, take part in a joint reading. This time I'm going to be doing Remember the Flowers, which... You may be aware I'm covering myself, but I'll be joining the rest of them for a group read through of that one. So that will be fun and something to watch out for if you'd like to follow us there and see how we all manage working together. Like the Sentinels here, it's working together, teamwork. Uh, okay, bad segue back to the actual video we've just been doing. And talking of team, I do have a team of patrons who are very much appreciated. Oh, the links get worse, don't they? Apart from the fact that I do appreciate all my patrons, you help a lot. It's uh, You don't have to give anything, and I'm surprised you do. But my top patrons as ever are Burnt Toast, Kartek, Copas Visser, Esuksu, Lark Eskerton, Bastion, Brian Hall, Tiger Cup, Ida Corval, Anubis Silverwind, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Sindri Dragowolf, Marcus, Evan King, Monolay, Exac, Aaron Fox, Mohamed Al Zamel, and Andy Peng. Thanks to all of you. So that's uh, what's coming up uh, next, as I say. We will also be doing more Liar later this month, so catch up with what's going on with Lyle and the rest of them there. And I'll be doing a short Halloween reading actually on the night. I'll probably record that ahead of time, but something else to look out for at the end of October. It's the end of October coming up where it's, let's see today, the 13th. We have snow. It's finally arrived. So the waiting is over. And now we can slink into winter and it'll be a good time to do more VN readings. It's nice and warm inside. But that is absolutely it for now that you've had the weather report. It'll probably melt the way the forecast is going, who knows. But after the uh, news of what's coming up, you look forward to the future programming, the news. A quick look at the clock shows us it's currently coming up to four minutes past six as I record this. And while I'm bothering doing this BBC HTV style close down one, probably none of you are actually knowing what I'm going at. I don't know. It's how these things go. You just ramble on until you figure you've said enough. And stop recording. So time to stop recording. Thanks for watching and bye for now.